divided by only six points. Steve Lampson with a three-point lead over Stefan Roncato. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. So far this season, the 125 National Championship chase has been wide open with the freight train of leaders up front. But one rider that's been missing is one of the preseason favorites, FMF Honda's Brock Sellers. Brock, how do you catch up and get on the winning track again? It's, you know, it starts off with getting good starts. I need to get, you know, go some good starts here this weekend and try to get out front. And once I get out front, you get into the flow, and it's, it's pretty easy after that. I just had, you know, four crashes in six races, which is unusual for me. Southwick is a sand track. Do you consider yourself much of a sand rider? Yeah, I got second here last year. You know, Ricky won. He's probably a, the best sand rider there is. But, uh, yeah, I really like the sand, and I just got adapted to riding sand in the last two years, and it, it become a lot easier for me. Well, we'll see today if Brock can catch back up and get himself back into the title chase here at Southwick. David Bailey, this is such a challenging track as we see them cleaning off the cement starting pad. Trying to get that as dry as possible right now, Art, because it drizzled slightly, so if that's wet, they're going to get a lot of wheel spin. Track here at Southwick, same as always. Sandy takes right off the cement, and Davey's going to start right from there. Start out here on a concrete starting pad. <laughs> Come off that gate like a French guy. Down to here. The track is already just the second practice session. You can see the big breaths already starting to form up. You break into the back here. Southwick is a really hard track to learn. So much so that David Billerman came back last week and rode an amateur race just to get a feel for it. He was 6-1, said he loved the sand, but had a hard time memorizing the track. So these big ass turns. You can see all the deep sand. The object is to keep the throttle on. Coming to this section, these are the berms that David Bailey, that's right, David, you, and Paul Buckley made famous. This big, great bird is just hitting, he's wide open. Right here. Can't even hit it. Huh. Well, that, that berm was a little bigger when I was hitting it, so we'll let Davey slide right there. Over a double into this right-hand sweeper, and he's got it pinned. Our Suzuki starting grid, Steve Lampson, our points leader, and Stefan Roncata. Three points behind Lampson. It's an important race for him. Talon Bolin not that far away. And the phenom, Travis Pastrana. Nick Way, best finish with the second overall in the last race at Mount Morris. We got Casey Johnson and Brock Sellers trying to get back on track. Lots of potential there as we take a look at the rest of the field. Pro Circuit's Nathan Ramsey. FMF's Michael Brandis, last week's winner on the KTM for the first time in national history, Kelly Smith. Carter and Silva, regional riders, they always seem to do well on this track. Robbie Skaggs on the Husqvarna, he's got a whole shot this year. Roderick Tain, one of the lesser known Frenchmen, working well for KTM this season. 125 riders now at the gate as they're doing some last minute track preparation. There's Talon Volan. Volan really hopes for a good performance here being third in the series. I think this track suits his style as well. He's one of the stronger riders, so he can get out there and muscle around the sand. There's Travis, always happy. His first pro ride at Southwick. We'll see how he does in the sand. And Steve Lampson, the seasoned veteran, who just hopes for good starts, consistent performances. He wants to be there in the end. Nick Way starting to pick up his action as well. Way with an 11 and four in the two motos last year had a fourth. And Brock Sellers, of course, with a second place finish here at Southwick with a 2-3. 40 riders, but only 20 will score points. The 125s and 250s run two motos each. The combined score from those two motos add up to give us an overall winner. It's get nervous time now for the 125s as we get set for our first moto of action of the 125s. Let's take a look from above. That's Travis Pastrana on the left and Lampson on the right. Pastrana getting the bead on Lampson. But from the outside, Pro Circuit's Nathan Ramsey gets the whole shot. A great start for Ramsey. And some tie-ups there in the first turn. Justin Buckaloo was one of them, and Kelly Smith, last week's winner, is down in the first turn. What a bad break for that historic rider. 
Bucklew was pinned under both of those bikes. You see Kelly Smith kind of trotting back over. Not in a real big hurry. He's shaking up slightly, but what an advantage for Ramsey out front right now to be first around the corner and up the big hill. Fonseca right behind him. Yamaha of Troy, and then it's Pastrana on the Team Suzuki. Folden is right there. Wally Silva is also in the top five with Lampson and Rancata slower starts. Big advantage to get great starts here at Southwick, especially with a little bit of rain they've had. The sand is wet, so by the end of the first lap with a mid-pack starter worse, you've already gone through most of your tear-offs. Both these one-two riders are trying to make a lasting impression here during the motocross season. Number 24, Nathan Ramsey, and 28, Ernesto Fonseca, both winning the 125 region titles a year ago, but having difficult seasons this season in Supercross. Nathan Ramsey, of course, injury-plagued, and Fonseca, well, having a lot tougher competition in the division this year. And Fonseca's really had the trouble hitting the stride in the outdoor nationals as well. Even last year, he struggled quite a bit. Look at him over the big double there, the first lap. I'm anxious to see if, if Fonseca can pick it up here. I know he doesn't want to just be a Supercross rider. He wants to do well outdoors as well. This is the kind of start he needs. Fonseca getting better starts now. Of course, he was used to the shorter tracks in Costa Rica in preparation during his amateur career. Came to America just to race a few of the amateur races. But right now, he's placed behind Nathan Ramsey in second place with Travis Pastrana and Talon Bolin. The Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Honda, the company that defines performance on two wheels. Performance first. And by Suzuki, makers of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. A great start to our first moto here at Southwick as Nathan Ramsey... In round number four is the leader here with the 125s with Fonseca in second. And here comes Talon Bullen, and he just nips the rear end of Travis Pastrana there. That was close. Looked like Talon was just about ready to high side off the back wheel of Travis. Travis looked over at him like, didn't know he was that close, maybe. Starting to get, these guys are in third and fourth and fifth positions. You can see how covered they are with sand. You can imagine that's what their goggles look like as well. So vision is tough. Yeah, and you've ever been sandblasted? Boy, I'll tell you, you'll get it here. Bolin trying to make some time back up now on Travis. He got close. This is how he did it. He looked like he squared the corner coming out, and their lines came together in the air. Travis is already looking at him. Look how close they came. Boy, that could have ended up in a bad one. Good save. Travis looks back at him again. You ever notice Travis? He can still do what he's doing and look around. I mean, if I turn around and look, the bike goes that way. <laughs> Ramsey Fonseca still 1-2 with Travis Pastrana in third, Talon Bullitt in fourth. Wide open through that corner. That used to be a little bit more of a jig jog full of berms and had to think a little bit more. Now these guys just pin it through there. There's Pastrana moving into second place. Pastrana on Fonseca. Let's see what Bolin tries to do on number 28 now. I think Bolin realizes that Travis has got the pace and the lines, the places to pass. He's got to make his move and follow him through the pack. Boy, look at the rebound of the bikes and Bolin. He lands on his feet. I don't even know what to say there. I've never seen anything quite like that. He tried to get real aggressive and make his pass and just got completely kicked sideways. There's Snell going by. Number 29, Casey Johnson. Another look, David. Well, watch him come down. He gets to the inside of Roncotta right here. He's got the brake locked up. The front end just comes to a stop. It looked like his rear wheel rode up the rear wheel of Fonseca, and he lands on the feet. That's the coolest crash I've ever seen. <laughs> Saw one in Bercy where Ryan Hughes did a, a tumbling act and landed on his feet in a whoop section, but there's a bit of uh, gymnastic artistry there to Volton, that's for sure. Travis Pastrana in second now. Looks like he's got a bead on Ramsey, David. He does look like he's got the pace. Now he doesn't have anybody behind him bothering him. Bolin was there for a little while, but now he can just focus on the leader, try to study where he might be able to make his pass, stay out of that roost, not worry about pressure from behind for a couple of laps. Travis Pastrana did have a hand cast on to protect the injured ligaments, but the doctors said from four to six weeks it should be healed, and at midnight last night, it was uh, four weeks, and he says, I've had it. 
I can't hold on to the handlebar. I'm going to take it off. He's a tough kid. Uh-oh. More problems now for Fonseca. Fonseca going down while he was in third. Let's check in with Davey, who's with our leader's mechanic. John, it looks like you and Nathan have been working on those starts. Another hole shot for the number 24. Yeah, you know, uh, we've been focusing real hard on starts for the last couple years. That's been Nathan's weak point for a long time. I think it's turned into a strong point. I hope, uh, hope we can just stay out front and lead this race and just keep getting hole shots and keep leading races and drag ourselves up to speed outdoors. Nathan Ramsey, number 24. He's going to get pushed to his max right now because Travis looks to me like he's got a lot more speed. He just seems to be riding around the track like he's still checking it out, like it's practice. I think he's able to go quite a bit faster, and he's just kind of biding his time right now, waiting for a good place to make a clean pass. Starting to get rougher now. You can see he's getting into these berms. He's got big whoops. Some braking bumps starting to develop. And sand flying everywhere. We'll be right back as... Steve Lampson and Stefan Roncotta, they were sixth and seventh. They moved up to third and fourth. At Southwick, Massachusetts, the 125 first motor, Travis Pastrana, is really putting the heat on number 24, Nathan Ramsey. Pastrana to the inside. They go bar to bar. Look at the speed they're generating in this sandy soil. Nathan Ramsey holding on for the time being as they come over the jump. Pastrana just looking for opportunity right now as they head into the trees. He's being smart. He's trying to stay as close as he can. Look, at he's almost running into the back tire of, of Ramsey everywhere he can to stay close enough so that if there's any kind of a mistake or when he gets to a place on the racetrack where he feels he's faster, he'll be close enough to make a pass. Gnarly looking section right there. Nathan Ramsey still holds on to the lead. Lampson still in third. Ron Kana in fourth. And Brock Sellards has moved up to fifth now. Ramsey putting in a great ride here. The start helps. You know, we already heard Sellers talk about, well, he's got the speed, but if he can't get a start and get out there away from all the traffic in mid-pack, it's hard to really show your speed. Look at Travis, different line there, just trying to keep Nathan guessing. Travis Pastrana in second place. You just got the feeling that any time now, he's going to take, take the opportunity to move into the lead. Of course, he won his first professional moto at Mount Morris last week. Would he love his first overall here at Southwick? They have really pulled away from third now, Art. They, you can't even see third in the picture. These guys, have, Ramsey has set a fast pace, and Travis has been able to match it, maybe raise him one. And so far, Ramsey hasn't made a mistake. This is the section where it used to be the finish line, wide open across the top. Big, long left-hand sweeper full of bumps. Pastrana going wide. Now cuts to the inside. Pastrana, nice clean move. Moves into the lead now. He's got the angle on this turn. And Travis Pastrana is our new leader. That was close coming out of that corner. Ramsey came out of the inside and got close. Watch this pass, though. I think... Travis caught Nathan completely by surprise right here. Nathan's in the best line, it appears to be, in the berm, and Travis is squeezes right by on the inside with no bumps right on that off camber. Makes the pass. Sits back and heads up the hill in first place. Little swap there by Nathan coming up the big uphill, loses a little time. He's got to try to stay with Travis and figure out where he's able to make up all that time. Lee McCollum has the pleasure of naming Travis Pastrana's wrencher. Let's go down to the pits. Lee, Travis just made quite a good pass. What's the plan now? Uh, the plan is to stay smart, stay on two wheels, and be smooth and just flow around the track. His lap times are good. He's looking good. Just needs to keep flowing around the track. Are you worried at all about his fitness on a track like South Bay? Now, nah, his fitness is good for every track. There's no problem with that. While well, Pastrana's our leader, is a battle going on for third right now. And you see Brock Sellers, number 18, trying to advance on Ron Cotta and Steve Lampson. You would think Sellers, after a second place last year to Carmichael, with Carmichael moving up to the 250, Sellers would be the favorite. Didn't get a great start, but a little bit better than he's been getting. At least he kept it on two wheels. And now he's got a look here at Lampson and Ron Cotta. These guys have been on the move, so Sellers' pace is fine. Ron Cotta has been content to follow Lampson up through the crowd, but right now it looks like he's making his move. Ron Cotta takes third place. 
Lampson looks back at Sellers. Lampson won this race in 95 and 96, and Sellers moves in front of Lampson. So all of a sudden, our points leader coming into the race goes from third to fifth. Well, there's a couple of things I'm noticing here. One is Sellers is on the move. He's just plowing through everything with a lot of momentum, and Lampson keeps looking back. So, whoa. A little bit out of shape right there by Roncada, but he recovers nice. And Lampson is losing even more time, so you, I'm wondering if something's wrong with the bike, maybe. Incredible recovery from Roncada on that last move. Well, watch what happens. He comes down the hill. He just turns the wheel a little bit too tight, stuffs it into the sand. But watch what these guys do. They never take their finger off the clutch. Right there, he's got it. He's able to make a great recovery. He didn't even lose any time. So Roncada now moving up to third behind Nathan Ramsey. And he's starting to put some heat on Ramsey as Brock Sellers is right with him. Sellers has been a fine race. Ron Cotto as well. These guys have been patient, worked their way up. The Suzuki stop watch to check out the intervals. Wow, what a lead by Pastrana. This will be two moto wins in a row if he can keep it up on two wheels. It would have been three if that weird spark plug deal hadn't happened in the first moto at Mount Morris. These guys are almost 20 seconds down. That's about the biggest lead we've experienced so far this year. Yeah, it's a blowout right now. Look at Ron Cotta just cruising down the inside right there. People having to back out of his way, trying to find some smooth sand. Let's check in back with the pits now and Davey Coombs. Todd, after a few bad motos in a row for Brock, it looks like he's finally got back on the pace here in the first moto. Yeah, it seems that he's finally getting into the rhythm. I mean, he should be running up front. Um, we've had some bad luck last couple of races, so he's got a lot to prove. He's def definitely a contender, so hopefully luck will come our way and he can end up on the podium this weekend. Todd hit the nail on the head. Luck has been a big part, or bad luck, has been a big part of Brock Seller's season so far. Now look at Nathan Ramsey. He's got company all of a sudden. It's going to be hard for him to adjust his pace. And there's Ron Cotta moving in front of Ramsey, and here comes Sellers right behind him. Look out, Nathan. Sellers, what a quick cut to the inside. That was beautiful. He just threw it into that berm at the inside at the top of the hill there, right in front of his mechanic. If you're going to do a cool move. You want to do it right in front of your mechanic. You know, he's working hard on that week, all, on, the, on the bike all week. He wants to see you do something good. There's Sellers coming down to that tight turn out of the trees. Pick on the outside, still holding off Ramsey. Travis Pastrana, though, is way out in front. Stefan Roncada. Five opening moto. Steve Lampson moves up another notch, passing Nathan Ramsey. What a pass. All the way around the inside pin and just forces Ramsey all the way wide. So Lampson's experience here at Southwick pays off, and Ramsey may have used a little bit too much energy in the early part of the race trying to hold off this guy. Travis Pastrana, the final lap. All ready to make it. Two consecutive moto wins as he goes by his very happy mechanic, Lee McCollum. He's Standing high in the saddle, David. He's looking around for friends and family members and people standing around the edge of the racetrack. And when he wins, he seems to have so much fun doing it his whole last couple of laps. He could fall down twice and still win this moto. He has such a tremendous lead, waving to the fans. Well, the more he waves to them, the more they scream for him. It just keeps, it just snowballs. There's his mom. Debbie Pastrana. Big smile on her face as her son comes around for the final time here with the opening moto. And the crowd's really getting with it. Tries a little wheelie there. Not easy in the sand soil. The checkered flag with the heel clicker comes out. Travis Pastrana has taken his second consecutive moto. Look out, he is hot. We've already got a tight points race. He's just making it tighter. Pastrana, Stefan Lancana moves ahead of Lampson in the points now as we look toward moto number two. Brock Sellers, his finest finish of the year in third. Lammy came up to fourth. Nathan Ramsey slipped to fifth. And the local Wally Silva did well, the highest privateer. Let's go to Davey. Well, Brock, welcome back to the winner's circle. You finished third, your best outdoor finish so far this year, and toward the end there, you might have been the fastest guy on the track. Yeah, I, I had a slow start, didn't get the best hole shot, but 
I charge all the way up to Roncado, and we just had a bloodbath out there. I just, actually a sand bath, because I just ate a sand the whole race. But, you know, it was a pretty tough race to come from that far and keep charging. And I knew if I tried to keep that pace the whole race, I wouldn't have nothing for second moto. So hopefully I can come back strong and stay up. Roncada, who was injured last year during this race, unable to ride, comes back with a tremendous second place finish. Let's go back to Davies with Stefan. Stefan, you didn't get that great of a start, but wow, way to keep charging all the way through. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I sure didn't get the hot shot, but uh, I was, I think, in the top 10, and uh, my Yamaha tour was pretty great. It took me a long time to pass Steve. You know, it's hard to pass on the track, and, uh, and Steve was going really, really fast over there. But uh, as soon as I got to him, uh, I started catching up a little bit, and. Uh, <coughs> I have very good momentum going, and uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to be second here, you know, today. Okay. What about in the second moto? Do you feel like you still have the strength to get out there? Well, we'll see. You know, I did uh, a lot of different things in those two weeks. I, I've been drinking a lot every day. I've been training in the heat. And, uh, you know, it's the first sun race in, uh, of the year. It's a very tough track. Uh, I feel way better now that I was feeling in the hang turn, and, you know, and that's my first guy out there. You know, Travis rode a great race. Uh, he had a great, great start, it was a great race, and uh, it was really fast out there, so uh, you can count on him for the second moto. So Travis Pastrana's second moto win of his pro career was a dominating one as he conquered this track for the first time. Let's go back to Davey. Well, Travis, if someone hasn't been to Southwick since you were 10, wow. Uh, I, I had no idea what to expect to sand. I know I hadn't fared too well here uh, the last time the locals smoked me, so did my homework, came back, and I hit neutral in the first turn. So I'm like, oh, no, repeat of uh, before where I crashed. But, uh, no, everything went great. Had an awesome battle with Fonseca and Bolin. We tangled, and, man, it was, it was cool. So at the end of the race, you had Nathan Ramsey win. And tell us about the pass down the straightaway. Uh, actually, there was a few passes. We went back and forth. It's hard, like, it's hard to make a pass because there's one line that's really good, and you get off of it. It's hard. So every time he passed me or I passed him, the other guy would get back by. But, um... Came in a little more aggressively than I would have normally liked to, but just to make sure I didn't knock him over the berm while I was going by. But uh, it, was, it was a good, I think, clean pass. And, man, I just want to thank Suzuki. I want to thank all the fans. You see her here, guys, in the back with uh, blow horns, and this is cool. All right, good job, Travis. Thank you, David. So Travis Pastrana keeps his hot streak in the 125s alive. Can David Billman do the same in the 250s? He's next. And it's a really sandy. And uh, we have so many uh, different tracks this year, the in Sacramento, the Mud in Mount Morris, and now the Sand. And uh, I didn't ride in the Sand since uh, last year in GP, so it's kind of difficult. It's why I came here last week to race uh, the local race. And I feel pretty good, and I feel with a good start, I can do a, again a podium uh, tonight. Do you consider yourself a sand rider? Is there a lot of sand tracks in your part of France? Yeah, we have sand tracks in GP and where I live also, but you know, after a long series of Supercross, and uh, I did not, you know, practice in the sand at all so it's why I came last week and uh, I don't think I'm I'm bad but I don't think I'm really good so we'll see today <laughs> there you have it David Billman doing all the extra work it takes to maintain that points lead and try to get a championship his first year in America let's take a look now at the starting grid Greg Albertine the defending series champion playing with pain he's got a very sore knee David Billman the overall winner at Hangtown looking for another one Sebastian Tortelli, third in the point standings, looking to move up. His teammates, Ezra Lusk and Kevin Windham. Larry Ward has won this race twice on the 125 circuit. And Mike LaRocco and Tim Ferry. Ferry getting stronger and stronger, looking for a top 10 performance before the season's over with. John Dowd, one of the three double winners in 125 and 250 action here at his home track. Of course, the other was Doug Henry. And then you had Mike Kondrowski also turning that trick. Ricky Carmichael, of course, hoping for a win here today in the 250s, and he would be the fourth in such a category. 32nd board is up. You can see the cement down there is wet. These guys are going to be dealing with wet sand, the roost, trying to get some traction off that wet cement is not going to be easy, and the start is so important. There's David Billum in the center of the picture, down to the left, Albertine to the right, and uh, it looked like Dowdy getting the best jump of those three. And it's Shane King on the KTM getting the whole shot. He's in a battle with number 17 team Suzuki's Robbie Rayner. And Rayner's teammate Damon Huffman right next to him, so great starts for Suzuki. King still holding the lead now. And that's Kevin Windham, number 14, moving into third. Oh, Rayner just smoking around the outside to get a good drive up that hill. Needs it against the horsepower of Shane King. 
track's starting to get a lot rougher now. After that 125 moto, this track is about as rough as it gets, you think, but it gets even worse. Trust me, the second moto is grueling. And David, I can just imagine what that four stroke is throwing up as far as the sand is concerned. Well, it's going right in Robbie Raynard's face. Look at the line starting to flow. Little mistake. That could have been a front end washing out right there by King. Nice save. Former 500 GP champion. And trouble for Mike LaRocco as well as Ricky Carmichael. They connected bikes, and Ricky Carmichael is in about 38th position now, and Mike LaRocco will be in last. You can see from LaRocco's body language there, he was not in a real big hurry to, hurry to get going, just disgusted. Plus, he had a pretty good-sized uh, little spot of dirt on his back. He may have gotten kind of punched in the back by part of the bike or something and got the wind knocked out of him. Shane King coming around to be the leader of the first lap, but Robbie Rayner cuts to the inside and is our new leader. And Raynard already wide open on the power as they came by. Windham and Ward, that's Tortelli number 21. Tortelli in good position to gain some points here today. Villeman also a very bad start. I expect Tortelli to be really fast right here. As long as he's close enough to these leaders, I think on this sand track, the rougher it gets, the better for Sebastian. So here in the early going of our 251st moto, a couple of surprise leaders, King and Raynard, with Wyndham in the wings, and Larry Ward in way. Kevin Wyndham moved into second, passing Shane King, and right now, it is Larry Ward, number 10, on the Team Kawasaki, getting by King into third. An impressive run for Larry Ward. Anytime you've won at a racetrack before, it always feels good coming back. Look at Tortelli, starting to put the pressure on King now, so... I don't know if King was glad he got that whole shot or not, because look at all these guys just ripping past him right now. I don't think he can be disappointed with the kind of riders that are passing him. It's just the way it goes when you're not quite up to pace. King with a very sore back. Sticking it out, though, as most of these riders this time of the year are riding with injuries. I think you can hear that four-stroke going up the hill. Yeah, and I bet King can wish, wishes he could look over his shoulder and not see anybody, but he's got Lusk coming and John Dowd. You know those guys are fast here. Ezra Lusk, of course, having his season decimated with injuries, especially the Supercross season. Didn't get a race in. He's number 14 on the team Honda. Robbie Raynard continues to lead our first 250 moto. Let's see what's new in the Chevy Trucks Kawasaki bike setup with Davey Coombs. Southwick is a complicated race for the riders and the mechanics. Not only do the riders have to change the way they ride to adapt to the sand, but the mechanics have to set up the bike completely differently. Jeremy Albrecht's working on John Dowd's bike. Jeremy, what did you guys do different? Well, you know, basically we run the paddle on the rear, which digs really deep in the deep sand, and then we tried uh, a couple different front tires. Actually, it's not really like as sandy and deep as normal. It usually runs like a spiky front tire. Now we just have a front tire that just has uh, taller knobs, not really spiky. So depending on how the track conditions go, we're going to change that. But um, suspension-wise, a little softer than normal because it's really rough and really wallowy. And you just kind of, usually you slide the forks down. But with John, he's a little different. He, he just kind of wants to ride it, what he's used to at home. And most of the time, we slide the axle up. We got all kinds of things we do. But he just wants to ride and do it the way he does it, the way he is on a local weekend, I guess. So how he does should be good John Dowd the sand specialist and that's the setup he's going to use today I'm a little surprised with the success that Dowd has had here in the sand he doesn't change the bike much but he's a lot more comfortable leaving it alone and what Jeremy was talking about as far as dropping those fork tubes in the clamps it makes the front end a little taller a little bit more like a chopper because the front end just wants to dive in the sand Sebastian Tortelli number 21 now starting the challenge Larry Ward number 10 on the team Kawasaki that's a challenge you don't want, because you know Tortelli is going to get stronger and stronger as the race progresses. There goes Wyndham, and here comes Tortelli to the inside. Nice clean pass for Sebastian, who's making his way up through the ranks after having problems earlier. He's able to make that pass on Ward down the inside, sheer, just sheer strength. The inside's a lot rougher, so the guys tend to go a little bit wider as the race progresses, and Tortelli said, I don't care, I'll hit all the bumps if that's what it takes to make the pass. It's the kind of energy this guy has on the racetrack. Coming out of the trees in third place, Sebastian Tortelli. Tortelli leading in points last year up to Unadillo when he crashed and it put him out for the season. 
so you know he came back into this year with the confidence that he could win the title. Look at that right there, a John Dowd fan, obviously. <laughs> the flagger, it's probably how he got that job. Not as great of a ride from Billiman as I would have expected. Seventh isn't bad, I don't think he got a great start, but coming here to get some track time and, and being a European rider, as serious he, as he is about this national series, I'd have been up there knocking on the door a little bit more. Well, he took the season on, too, as a learning experience and has done much better than that, of course. As we see David Villeman in seventh place behind John Dowd. So it's Ward, Lust, Dowd, Villeman in fourth through seventh. What just happened back there to Villeman on that inside, getting sideways like that, is the part about that corner I always hated. It, it's something weird about the soil here at Southwick. It is very sandy, but just underneath that, it's kind of hard packed, and he got a lot of wheel spin right there. Found one of those hard spots. I've never heard you talk fondly about Southwick. I never won here, that's why. <laughs> David Villeman trying to battle up through the ranks from seventh place. We'll be right back in a moment. Thanks to your support, your local maid brigade has been steadily growing since 1987. We know your time is precious, so you can count on maid brigade to be there when scheduled. We also know how important a clean, fresh-smelling home is, so your satisfaction is always guaranteed. At maid brigade, our team stand behind the quality and reliability of each and every cleaning, and no long-term contract is required. Our success is a result of hard work and honest dealings. Maid brigade, because you have other things to do. Original floor plans that make living comfortable and quality appointments throughout are a couple of the reasons why so many Loudoners have chosen the villages at Round Hill. Oak Hill Properties is the creator of this fantastic new residential community at the foothills of the Blue Ridge. Villages at Round Hill now features townhomes in addition to their beautiful single-family homes. Sensibly priced with all the extras inside and out and quality through every room. Come and see the villages at Round Hill for yourself. Oak Hill Properties is an equal housing opportunity. This week, the LPGA Tour rolls into Atlantic City, where the stakes are always high, but the low score wins the trophy. The ShopRite LPGA Classic begins Friday at 2 on ESPN2. Tonight, the road trip rips into the desert, where an NL West battle heats up. Todd Helton muscles the Rockies against Steve Finley and the D-backs. The ultimate road trip rolls on. Rockies, Diamondbacks, tonight at 8 on ESPN. Welcome back to Southwick. This is the first photo for the 250s. Rainer D1, Sebastian Tortelli. Shane Drew is Tortelli's mechanic. Shane looked like Sebastian got a good start, but now he's got his teammate in front of him. How aggressive can he be with Wyndham up there? Uh, he'll be aggressive enough to get by him. Kevin slowed him down about four seconds the last lap. He dropped off about four seconds compared to when he's running by himself. So he's got to get by him soon or else he won't catch Robbie. But Sebastian's going to win it. How's this? Sebastian looking forward to a sand race like this? Yeah, he likes this place. So he's looking forward. Last year he had some bad luck and first corner pileups and stuff. So he wanted to come back and win this weekend. So he's going to win. Good confidence from the team Honda group and uh, not so much confidence right now for the new Cannondale. Keith Johnson, something went wrong with the machine after a pretty good performance last week, David. Yeah, that's too bad. It's a brand new bike, though, and we made it through last week. That was a pretty good test, so I'm sure they're going to have their little problems here and there getting that bike ironed out. The battle for second place. Wyndham still holds it down, number 14. It's going to be a fight. Look at Tortelli. He's got to run. Tortelli. Tortelli takes over second place. What a run for Tortelli. A great charge. And look at the difference in Tortelli. He's just covered with sand. He can't even really recognize him from the front. Kevin's all clean. It's pretty much how it is every week. Kevin gets such good starts. I bet Sebastian wishes he could trade with him. This is big as far as points are concerned. And let's take another look at the pass. Well, look, Sebastian's just got more momentum. He's carrying more speed around this line, which is going to put him to the inside of the next corner. Kevin knows it. That looks over a little bit going, yeah, you can have it. Gets around the lapper as well. It's pretty nice there not to roost Kevin as he takes off. So it's Robbie Rayner. And now Sebastian Tortelli and Kevin Windham are top three. This is the part of the moto where if you're not in great shape, it's going to show. And now Kevin, I'm not sure if it's conditioning or not, but I'm just going to assume that it is. He's starting to lose a little bit of his aggressiveness, and Lusk is catching him, too. There's Dowd, and then David Villeman. 
I'll tell you, the points race is getting so serious that practices even uh, were getting contact. There were some words uh, that R.C. and David Villeman put each other down in practice. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. This guy's been playing head games all year. Our spotters are telling us that David Villeman is having some problems. You see there, the team Yamaha crew very concerned. And uh, there's a shot of it. David Villeman has a DNF. How, is, how important is this to the points race? This He can't be a happy Frenchman right now. Villeman, the first foreign rider since Cars Makers in 74 to win back-to-back -back 250 motocrosses here in America, will not make it free. All that time he spent back here during the week off to ride the local race, all that time getting ready for nothing right now. No points. That's too bad. So David Villeman, sideline. He came from 13th and was in contention there. Maybe he could get inside the top five by the end of this moto. All that work. He, if the, the fight's going to quit, you want it to quit early in the race. You don't want to use all that energy, but at least he knows how the track's going to be developed for the second moto now. They've got a big job maybe getting that bike back, and we'll uh, check in with Davey as soon as we can to find out what the problem was there, as I'm sure they're probably sorting it out. Let's go to Davey. David, what happened to the bike? I think I'll be on the clutch. And uh, the bike was neutral, you know. Sansa straight up behind down, and I could not get. Uh, I was losing up the, the clutch, but you know, nothing happened. And uh, was slipping, slipping. And at the end, it was like all the gear in neutral. You think you can get it fixed for the second moto? Yeah, I think the bike will be ready for the second moto. And that's bad because I lose a lot of points today. That was pretty good for him. We just saw him slam his helmet against the berm a moment ago, and now he's kind of regained his composure and. Considering he's lost 25 points, that's hard to make up against these guys. That certainly shows a great maturity in the young man as we take a look at the Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series schedule. Welcome back to Southwick, Massachusetts. In our first 250 moto, this was the scene a few moments ago as one of our point contenders, David Villeman from France, had to take the long walk back toward the pit area. His machine just gave up, and here you see him now talking with his father before returning back to the truck. Of course, this spells opportunities for others like Sebastian Tortelli trying to make a move now on Robbie Rayner, and he does so. Sebastian Tortelli takes first place. What does mechanic say, David? He was pretty confident. Shane Drew acted like no problem. Tortelli was going to win this race, and now he has the lead. I don't think that Rayner has enough to come back on him. Tortelli was able to catch him from pretty good ways back. And he's just motoring. Look at him go. Tortelli now trying to push it way out in front. Let's take another look at that pass. Same thing again. This outside line, the same way past Kevin Windham. I'll draw it again. Casey just joining us. That line sets you up on the inside to the next corner. Raynard knew it. He had to look over and give him the room. And so there's Robbie Raynard in second place. Davey Combs uh, has a new perspective on David Villeman. Let's go down to Davey. A lot of activity going on here in the first moto. Mike LaRocco and Ricky Carmichael crashed on the first lap. Carmichael's come from almost dead last. Then Villeman just trying to clutch. He's out of the points chase. The way it looks right now, Sebastian Tortelli, the leader, might just be the points leader going into the second moto. Okay, thanks, Davey. As our leader, Sebastian Tortelli, has not slowed down one iota. He knows he's in a good position right now with Ricky Carmichael trying to fight his way back up through the pack. Look at Tortelli charge them. This is later in the race. The guys are getting tired. The track is the worst it's been so far today in terms of being the roughest. And he's already got a pretty good lead over Rainer, and he's still charging. This has been a hot and cold track for Ricky. Yes, he's won twice in the 125s here in 97 and 99. But in 98, he had one of his worst ever 125 races, where he placed 28th and then came back for a second, a ninth overall. You might recall there was a, a head gasket problem or electrical problems that uh, really put him in a state of frustration. He's in a state of frustration again here today because after Mount Morris, he lost a lot of points, lost the points lead, and then going down the first lap, he had so much ground to make up, and he is charging hard as well. He and Tortelli are on the move, the two fastest guys on the track probably right now. Whoa! Oh, Carmichael takes a hard hit on the chest. Landed right in the hole. Caught him off guard. He was trying to get around Albertine. 
Every point matters. This landed a little bit crooked, it looked like to me, Art. If you land in one of those holes and the front wheels turn just slightly, that's all it'll take. You gotta turn a little bit to the inside, it just pops out the other way. Oh, and what a hard hit on those handlebars. Yeah, right in the chest. That takes a lot of energy to get up. And so Carmichael now has even further to go before this race ends as we've got Ezra Lusk, number 11, now putting the challenge to Kevin Windham, number 14. This is for third. Well, Kevin right here is riding defensive. He's trying to protect. And Ezra's been catching him slightly this whole race. Ezra, a winner here last year with a 1-1. That was his only victory of the year. The 94 winner, Mike LaRocco, has got four problems. Let's see if we can uh, go to the pits now in Davy. Check out, you can see Mike LaRocco's mechanics furiously trying to put a new pipe on. LaRocco's 250Cs, it just gets worse. The first turn crash with Carmichael, then he dinks his pipe. He's in the pit area, going to try and salvage some points. What a hard job to change a pipe at this point in the race, because everything in there is so hot. I remember Ali Seymour trying to change the pipe on Kevin Windham's bike a couple of years back. I think it's Glenn Helen burning his hands. And let me just add, that's the ugliest pipe I've ever seen, Art. <laughs> And uh, he's currently uh, battling for third and fourth. Look how fast Ezra goes around that corner through those holes. And here comes Ezra Lusk. Lusk moving into third, takes it away from Wyndham. He just wanted that more. At the top of that hill, those, those bumps are so deep and you're laid over through there. If you get a little crooked in there, you're going down for sure. And he just nailed it. How scary is it? It's scary. That's the, the tough part of the racetrack is that downhill. And the corner at the top, you're already thinking about the downhill and getting in a swap going down there, hitting all those braking bumps. Ezra just attacked it wide open. It's actually just kind of easy on the throttle, but a lot of momentum. And that gutsy move puts him in a good position for the overall in his comeback try. Let's check out this week's Honda profile. Three years ago, Mike Gossler received a call to become Ezra Lusk's mechanic, and they've been together ever since. Yeah, I think you have to have a, a good good friendship going, you know, to kind of understand each other and know when something's bothering somebody and also be able to take some criticism on both your parts, you know, and, and be, able to, be able to work together even though things aren't perfect and you just try to build on that and try to make things better. And, and yeah, it's very important to have a, a really good relationship with your rider. I think uh, communication is a, a, a big part of it. For most motorcycle mechanics, their dream is to one day tune for a big factory. But for Mike, it meant giving up a secure full-time job, making the decision a more difficult one. This is something I've always wanted to do in my life, and if I don't take this one opportunity to do it, uh, who knows, you know, I'm going to be kicking myself in the rear for the rest of my life. So I decided I'd do it for one year because, I, had, like I said, I had a pretty good job. And, it had a pretty good pension and it's pretty stable and I thought I'll do this job for one year and I think that was in the end of 93 <laughs> and I'm still doing my job so yeah I really enjoy what I do and Mike enjoys traveling the world tuning motorcycles but the job certainly calls for a personal dedication it is a ton of work it's a it's a lot of hours and you got to be pretty dedicated you know you have to make some sacrifices in your personal life and but I guess uh doing a job that you really enjoy doing beats doing a job that pays well and that you don't like doing any time you know and i feel really really uh really good about doing doing this job and, and having the opportunity to do it our first 250 moto there's ricky carmichael boy has he had an interesting day He's chasing uh, the series defending champion Greg Albertine and RC to the inside. Oh, they come dangerously close on that rugged terrain, and RC moves up another notch. Here is our leader on the final lap, number 21, Sebastian Tortelli. Things are looking a little, little bit more relaxed for Sebastian right now, but that pass by Carmichael was scary. That's the fastest place on the racetrack, and they were just elbow to elbow. Carmichael, of course, trying to pick up more points as Tortelli gets the big jump in points in this moto. There's the checkered flag for the first moto victory of the year for Sebastian Tortelli. It also pushes him up to number one in points before the second moto gets underway. It's Tortelli 
Robbie Raynard holds on to second place, and Ezra Lusk, his best finish of the year in third. Davies with our winner. Mr. Sebastian, what an impressive display of Sand Ryan out there. You got a pretty good start, but man, you turn it on at the halfway point. Yeah, you know, I, I, I got a good jump of the gate, but uh, uh, on the second part of the semi, I spanned a lot. And uh, I guess I was lucky Shane King was next to me and I had the all shot, so I just moved to the left and uh, it was next to the box, so that gave me a lot of room and I could push and make a good start. That's what saved me. And after I just, you know, ride like I know, try to be smooth and safe. And I was feeling very comfortable out there, so I just pick up my speed and um, get it. So it was great. Your mechanic, Shane Drew, told us that you were really looking forward to getting out here on this track. You hadn't had very good luck in the past, but you're really focused on this race to make it your first win of the year. Yeah, you know, uh, that's already three races in the championship, and uh, I think it's time for me to win. You know, I get, you know, more speed and more speed as soon as the race goes, out, uh, goes on. And, you know, uh, it's just the third race, so I want to start winning now and, you know, get some strong points and uh, try to put the lead. A great race for Sebastian Tortelli, but what a satisfying race for number 17, Robbie Raynard, who during practice this morning had his shoulder pop out of joint. It took him 10 minutes to get it back in, yet he takes second place. Robbie, I know it's been a long time coming back up to the top. It looks like you finally got it working on all cylinders. Solid second place here in the first moto. Yeah, I've been working on my starts this weekend off, and um, it paid off. You know, I got a good start. Um, and I just kind of rode, and I rode smooth. My shoulders bothered me a little bit, but, you know, I, I, my bike's running awesome. And I just got to go out there and try to get another start like that. In the second moto, do you think you can be a little more aggressive when Tortelli comes up like that? Should you be ahead of him? I sure hope so. You know, um, like I said, my shoulder's kind of sore. I had problems with it in the practice, and um, I'm just going to go out there and do the best I can and try to get some points. Oh, good job. Good to have you back on the podium. Thanks a lot. For Ezra Lusk, number 11 of Team Honda, it's been a slow comeback after missing the entire Supercross season. And Ezra here today, placing third in the moto, gets his best finish so far. Let's go back to Davey. Hey, Yogi, same thing I said to Ravi. Welcome back to the winner's circle. A good solid ride in the first moto. Thank you, Davey. You know, I've been, I had a little plan when I came into Glen Hill, and it was to take baby steps and just gradually get back up front. And uh, I didn't expect no more today. I mean, I wanted to get podium, but I was expected to win here, but I really wasn't expecting to this year because I'm not really as ready as I was last year at this point. But um, I'm, I'm working my way up and getting faster. Honda's working great. Done off. After 35 minutes at the front of the pack, how do you feel about the second mode? Do you feel like your strength's there? Well, I'm looking forward to it because I got a little tight that moto in the sand. The gloves were really wet from the rain and stuff, and I just got a little tight coming from the pack, and I think I burn a lot of energy trying to get by a lot of guys quick. And But I think if I rest up for 30 minutes or so, I'll be ready for the second one. Well, it's starting to rain once again here in Southwick, Massachusetts. As we look forward to the second moto of 125, Travis Pastrana tries to make it three moto wins in a row. When Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. Well, it's been raining uh, quite hard while we were away in that break as you look at Stefan Roncotta getting ready for the second 125 moto. Steve Lampson has some points to pick up to regain his lead. Let's go down to Davy and check out those track conditions. Well, the sand here at Southwick is not the only dynamic thing the riders have to deal with. They also have to deal with the weather. The first motor, we started to get some rain here before the start of the second motor. It started to clear up a little bit, but this after another shower. So the track is kind of wet. The sand is very wet, and that means the whole shot's going to be even more important. But again, the pavement is slick, so it's going to be yet another tricky equation thrown at the riders here for the start of the second 125 moto. Well, that's the bad news, but the good news is if if it was raining like this anywhere else other than Southwick in the sand, it would be horrible conditions. It looked a lot more like Mount Morris did last week. So the only thing bad about the wet sand is it makes the start critical because you don't want to get your face covered and wreck your vision. Other than that, the sand is actually better wet. 30-second board is up for our second 125 moto. Pastrana is working on a streak, winning the last two motos. At stake for Pastrana is his first professional overall motocross victory here in America as the board goes sideways and we're just about set to go for the photo number two of the 125s. They're off and running. Davey Pingree right there on the inside gets the whole shot. 
What a break for Pingree, who's had a tough season so far. He blasted off the concrete, got excellent traction. You could tell right away he had the whole shot. Here comes the Calvary. That's Pingree still out in front. Fonseca in second. Talon Bullen moves into third, 7-11. And Pastrana is right behind him. Lampson and Casey Johnson come next. And buried there somewhere is Ron Cotta. Another difficult start for Ricotta. And oh, that looks like Scott Carter. 54, the local rider. That was gnarly. That was a nasty crash right in the middle of the pack on the scariest downhill on the track. I guess he's broken the ice now. So our current leader there, as you see, David Pingree on the Suzuki. Watch this. Just buries the front end into the hole, lands right on his back. Now, I'd be worried about riders coming. I'm sure he was thinking that, and everybody, everyone somehow missed it. That was really fortunate. What a break for Pingree here to get that hole shot, get up there and showcase his talent a little bit. He had a great indoor season, even though he didn't end it with a championship. He still put in fine rides, having to come from behind all the time. Now he gets to do it from the front. There you see Talon Bullen in good shape. He's in third, number 711 on the Pro Circuit Kawasaki, and Pastrana's behind him. Pastrana just biding his time, it looks like, right now, letting things string out a bit as Pingree tries to set a pace. Well, while he's trying to get comfortable and set this pace, he's got a lot of pressure right now. Fonseca, number 28. Fonseca, Yamaha, Troy takes over the lead. And Bolden is right there. Can he slip in front of Pingree? Pingree shuts the door on the corner. There's Bolden. So Pingree back in second place now, trying to hold that position. But a very determined Talon Bolden goes into second. Bolin really getting creative with his lines there. I thought he was going to get the lead. He's already got Fonseca a little nervous looking at him as they climb the hill. Bolin is attacking right now. He does not want to let Pastrana or Lamps or any of those guys pitch a ride with him. He wants to disappear. Coming off a third overall at Mount Morris, he was uh, a third place winner here last year with a 5-2 in the two motos. But right now, it's Ernie out in front. Takes a few laps for these guys to really get comfortable on the racetrack, too, because it's so much rougher than it was for their first moto. It doesn't look as if the hard rain we've had has affected the track much as Bolden cuts in front and takes the lead. That was beautiful back there. I don't know how Talon turned so sharp in that corner, but he just squared it off, shaved off about 15 or 20 feet of racetrack. It wasn't like Fonseca went into the corner slow. He just took a better line. And so we've had our third different leader in three laps. Travis still right there. So Fonseca and Travis in the same position as they were in the first moto. Let's go back and take a look at how Talon got into the lead as he was coming into the corner. For a couple reasons, look at Fonseca. He jumps over this breaking bump, lands sitting down with his foot out. That's beautiful. And look at Talon squares it off so tight and while Fonseca's out there just trying to find a berm somewhere Talon just cuts off like I said about 15 to 20 feet of racetrack shorter line made the pass. Bolin's our leader but look at Pastrana. Pastrana making the move for second place gets by Fonseca and so now it's Travis Pastrana. He's looking to get the broom out for a sweep here at Southwick. There goes Lampson much better start for him this time. And so Talon Bowen has the lead anyway right now as Pastrana puts the heat on. We'll be right back. Thanks to your support, your local maid brigade has been steadily growing since 1987. Part of our success is because we can clean your home while you're at work. You will soon see how enjoyable it is to return to a clean, fresh-smelling home. No one in the industry goes farther to ensure a high-quality cleaning. We guarantee quality, and to prove it, we'll leave a quality card after each cleaning for ratings and comments, all to serve you better. Maid brigade, because you have other things to do. Hi, I'm Roger Dobson. We hear a lot today about family values. Since 1975, that's been a way of life at R.A. Dobson Incorporated. Family owned and operated, R.A. Dobson Incorporated has been providing quality heating and air conditioning service to your neighborhood. And now, meet the rest of the R.A. Dobson family. 
The values you hold near and dear to your heart are instilled in every one of our employees. At Dobson, we're dedicated to bring you the quality of service you have come to expect. Equal passion deserves equal opportunity. Equal skill deserves an equal chance. In celebration of Title IX, the act of Congress that guaranteed equality for women in sports, ESPN Classic presents From Babe to Billie Jean, an evening hosted by Lady Balls, Pat Summit, and ESPN. Second vote of the 125s. Talon Bolin is our leader, but there's a heck of a battle going on for second and third. Number 28. Ernesto Fonseca making the move on Travis Pastrana. Pastrana trying to hold him off. Looks over there, sits back, takes the corner. Here comes Fonseca. Bar to bar we go. Fonseca just doesn't want to give in to the 17-year-old. No, he almost went over the off the track on that berm. Couldn't quite line up for that inside. Travis had the faster outside line, and it would have put him on the inside into the next corner, so that worked out great. It looks like Travis is missing his goggles right now pretty early in the race for that, so that's kind of unfortunate. He Long way to a, go. Yeah, he must have had a problem with him, David, to take him off that early. Well, he's trying to see with the ruse, this is so important for him to try to hold everyone off now. And here comes Lampson. Lampson makes the move on Ernie. That fourth place in the first moto is not what Lampson had in mind. He's trying to improve on that here. He already has one position, and he's all over Travis. And Casey Johnson is approaching his Yamaha of Troy teammate. Number 29 is behind Fonseca. Most everyone agrees it's good to see Steve Lampson back in the 125 ranks and being a contender after winning the championship twice. We talked with him earlier. I'm pretty happy where I'm at right now. I expected to be, you know, close to being in the points lead. I didn't want to get too far out of it. And, uh, you know, here I am winning, you know, and... Uh, I just want to stretch it out a little bit, get a little more comfortable lead, and I think things are going to start happening here, you know, this weekend. Well, they're happening all right right now. Steve Lampson's trying to hold on to that point lead. He's currently in third place, a much better moto than the opener. Not that much. He's definitely trying to improve on it. Still got a long ways to go. He's got to stay in contact with Pastrana. Pastrana was the fastest rider on the track in the first moto. He can stay red close enough to see what he's doing, how he's going that fast. Should be good. Uh, maybe Travis won't be able to go as fast as he did the first moto. As soon as he gets sand in your eyes and can't see, you only go as fast as you can see. Lampson was 17th on a 250 here last year. He had a broken collarbone the year before with a 31st and 36th finish. So the last couple of years, in fact, the last three years, he's had tough times being injured in 97 as well. And right there, speaking of injuries, uh, number 35, who got our whole shot in this race, David Pingray. He was injured last year and the year before. Took a 17th in 97. This is certainly not his favorite track. Right now, he's in seventh place. Yeah, but if you read his column in Racer X, I swear you'll get a great ab workout. That guy's so funny. Yeah, I'd give him an A in English comp. He's a great humorist. Earlier this year, we heard Mike Kudrowski going from motocross over to the GNCC series. Well. This week, we saw the current GNCC leader, Shane Watts, try his hand at motocross. He's already won five GNCC events this year, but the Aussie has such a passion for racing, and he's always been a fan of motocross. He decided to try to qualify for this week's action. Uh, today, I'm just here, just as a personal goal, trying to qualify for outdoor national. Like, most of my races are off-road, and it's, yeah, I just want to see if I'm fast enough to do, do the motocross thing. I won the national championship back home for 500 cc's uh, about four years ago. So I'm not far into motocross tracks, but uh, there's a lot of fast riders out here, and it's going to be very tough. But if I can make the, the main, I'll be really stoked. With the GNCC Points Championship, a very real possibility for Shane this year, we asked him what his KTM team thought about his crossover into motocross. Yeah, there's, there's uh, pros and cons for it. Like, you know, they'd love to see me come along and qualify and get a lot of uh, good publicity out of it, but they also, they don't want me to go out there and get, get myself hurt for the for the GNCC championship. So it's a, you know, hopefully it'll be a win-win situation today and, and no negatives come out of it. He didn't get hurt. He didn't qualify, but he sure gave it a good shot. And what a job he's doing in that GNCC. He's turning that series on its ear right now. In our race in the 125 second moto, look at this, 199, Travis Pastrana starting to put the pressure on our leader. Just throwing it into those berms, Art, taking a completely different line from Talon, and I think 
part of that is because he's got to figure out where he can go fast so he doesn't have to soak up the roost of Talon without goggles. Outstanding racing by Travis Pastrana right now. He could finish in second and still take the overall. But he's not the kind of rider to take a second place. No, he's I got that opportunity. They to could put that on the board and he still wouldn't read it. <laughs> they are starting to separate themselves slightly from, from Steve Lampson back there, but Lampson is close if one of these guys falls down or makes a big mistake. Starts to get tired from the battle that looks like it's going to take place. Looks like he's looking down at his bike, but he's, I think he's just putting his helmet down to get away from the roost. That's exactly what he's doing. You see these guys lose a visor out there in a race. Not only does it look dumb, but you have no way to block that roost coming at you. Our next ESPN2 telecast comes to you from Bud's Creek, Maryland, on Saturday the 1st. Hope you can join us. He's upside down. This one has to go like that. Some children imagine that their father is the most powerful man in the world. The battle for the 125 lead in Moto2 is big time right now from Southwick, Massachusetts. Talon Bolden, who won the second Moto at Glen Helen in the opener, is trying to hold off number 199, Travis Pastrana. All these guys have found the smoothest line down the hill right down the middle. Usually they take off down the middle. That starts getting rough, so everyone moves to the outside. And that gets so rough, the middle becomes the smoothest again, and that's what's happened here. And as we mentioned earlier, Pastrana's trying to catch Bolin without goggles in this sandy soil. And now it's probably hard because you got the sun coming out a little bit. The shadows from these trees affects what you're trying to look at as far as focusing on your line. Trying to dodge the ruse, the talent. I don't know how he can concentrate right now. He's just riding on full adrenaline right now, thinking he can put two motos together. Whoa, he's going hard to the outside. Travis Pastrana's working for the lead. They touch back wheels. And Pastrana takes the lead on Talavola. Here comes Bolin back again. Those guys risked almost going down, both of them. I think that was just a little bit of an error on both their parts. Travis was coming from the outside, and it kind of pitched him back to the middle of the track, and Bolin was coming from the inside. They come close together. You can see Bolin, he already knows. Travis had a little bit of a wheel on him, so he may not have expected that. But that's possible. Those guys could have both gone down and handed the lead to Steve Lampson. And that's the same place on the racetrack where Carmichael went down during the first 250 motor. Pastrana looking to get back into the points race. And if he holds onto this lead and sweeps Southwick, he certainly will be in contention. And on a hot streak, it wouldn't have been for that weird first moto deal with Mount Morris to be four moto wins in a row. And coming off a of second place, hard charging through the pack to second at Hangtown in the second moto. So he is hot right now. Bolin is not letting Pastrana get away. And there you see the interval back to Steve Lampson in third. And Debbie Pastrana fairly excited that her son has taken over the lead. Doesn't look relaxed to me. <laughs> she looks. She needs to get a video camera or something and keep her mind occupied. Well, she's seen it all, that's for sure, as our Suzuki flashback subject is Travis Pastrana. The 17-year-old success on and off the track didn't come overnight. It was a culmination of many years in the amateur ranks. Not too many people actually knew that I had won five national championships in Loretta Lynn's motocross and you know, every year going down to the Mini O's and uh, World Mini GP in Vegas, uh, racing was definitely my huge priority. And you know, now that I have a, a chance in the pros, I think all the amateurs that I've that I've done and I've accomplished, you know, is definitely going to help me so much in the next years to come. Suzuki's Pat Alexander has been around the sport a long time. He spotted the soon-to-become phenom at an amateur race. I saw Travis when he was about eight years old, uh, when he was riding an RM80 at Indianapolis, and. Uh, he was jumping everything in sight, uh, along with a little doll that he had on his chest protector. And uh, it was unbelievable to see somebody so young uh, doing the things that he had done. So uh, it was, it was neat. needless to say, we just uh, decided to pick him up. And it was, we believe, was a good choice. For all the success, Travis credits his family for making sacrifices in their lives in order for him to realize his dreams. 
Well, it's amazing. As an amateur, you know, you need to have a lot of parental support. My parents backed me so much. Everything I did, you know, they'd sacrifice that. My dad would take off Friday from work, drive me down from Maryland to Florida, you know, come back and get in at noon on Monday after driving all night and go right back to work. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of sacrifice for my, my whole family, you know, my aunts, uncles, everyone involved. Um, you know, so it's, it's definitely, I really appreciate everything they've done for me. And coming into a pro now where it's kind of, you know, this is where the you get paid back. You know, my parents especially, they get to fly to all the races. I have a mechanic, Lee McCollum, who's doing a great job. My dad's like, wow, all I got to do is sit back and, you know, just watch the ride. And that's, that's all starting to pay off. And pay off big time, especially if he should win this moto and take home the overall. His very first as a professional. His mom, Debbie's a little nervous right now as Pastrana's pursuing Talon Bolin, number 711, for the Pro Circuit Kawasaki. He's been pacing back and forth. He's probably got a couple berms there by now. And Travis is just staying close enough. Keep the pressure on Talon. Make Talon worry about him. Make Talon think about what he's going to have to do when they get into lap riders. If he gets real close, should he take the outside? Should he take the inside? Because this track is so wide and so rough now, the passing lines have opened up. Well, I hope he's not too far-sighted. He came pretty close to that mechanic sign as he went by. <laughs> I know these guys have used in the beginning of practice is one line, but by the end of the day, there's so many different places to go. And Lampson is not that far behind these guys. He is riding hard, trying to keep up. Talon Bullen so far, a good job in holding the lead after taking it over on the sixth lap. Hopefully, motocross is coming your way soon to check it out. Next, we go to Buchanan, Michigan. Then it's on to upstate New York, Ohio. Washugo, Washington out west before heading back to the Midwest and then east. Finishing up the schedule in Delmont. We'll be right back with more action. Introducing the first Suzuki ATV, available in your choice of manual or automatic transmission. The Quad Runner 500, an all-new Quad Master 500. The choice is yours. Get a Suzuki Quad Master 500, zero down, 9.9% .9 financing. Hurry, this offer won't last. Where can you find the largest selection of wakeboards, water skis, and kneeboards? FartsWaterSports.com. Where can you find the latest apparel and personal watercraft product? FartsWaterSports.com. Where can you find boat covers, ladders, propellers, and dock accessories? FartsWaterSports.com. FartsWaterSports.com has over 5,000 products pictured online. Shop 24 hours a day at FartsWaterSports.com for the best in water sports equipment. Jump into summer fun with FartsWaterSports.com. Hey, what's up, Tony? Hey, Stu. What you doing? Is there a lot of security around here? Yeah, I mean, what do you mean? Well, you know, security guards. Time is running down now for our second moto of the 125s here in Southwick, Massachusetts. And the pursuit for the lead is still underway with Travis Pastrana not that far behind Talon Bolin. We're on the white flag lap, the final lap, so time is running out for Travis. Now, oh, he has been chasing this whole time. Look, it cuts off a little bit of racetrack right there, gains some time. Talon came up short there, so he's definitely working on Talon's mind. And it's a slingshot effect for Travis Pastrana. Bar to bar we go now. This is for the win. Talon Bolin just edges out in front of Travis Pastrana. They're both a little bit shy about that jump that time. That's where they already got together once in this race. Coming down to that speed section right there, it used to be the finish line. Travis Pastrana cutting to the inside now on Talon Bullen, and the Suzuki has the lead on the final lap. What a performance by Travis Pastrana. Lee McCullough almost got in the way of Talon Bullen that time. Travis poured it on. Look how fast Bolin went down through that corner on the inside, wide open, never let it off. He wants this bad. Travis has hit a bad hole right there, the little nose dives. These guys are pushing it as far as they can right now. Look at Travis's face, covered in sand. I don't know how he can see. Pastrana going all out to hold on to the lead as they go down that dangerous speed hill. 
Still in third place is Steve Lampson. Travis Pastrana looking for a mistake-free ride the rest of the way for his very first motocross victory as a professional. The first of what we anticipate to be many. He's only got this corner and the next left-hander, and he's got it made. Nods his head to the corner worker, looks back, and the checkers for Travis Pastrana. He has swept both motos of the 125. He's got a streak of three moto wins in a row. He's got his first victory, and Roger DeCoster couldn't be happier. Pastrana holding off Bolin, taking the lead in the last lap. Lampson, important points in third. Stefan Roncata all the way back up to fourth. Talon Bolin gave it his all, Davey. <laughs> Talon, I see you and Travis talking about the last moto. What an exciting race. Yeah, he's giving it my all, you know, and uh, Travis was riding really good. He had some better lines. <clears throat> when he got by me, I followed his lines, and then I knew I had a few better lines. He made a mistake, got in back. Then he picked up on my line, so I think our pace even increased as the moto went on. And I just went a little far outside, and it was a rough track, and he got me. I mean, it was a tough race. We were real close. Just one of those things, but I just keep pegging away, working hard, and it'll come. It seems like the championship is starting to break down to the two veterans, you and Steve Lampson, and then Stefan Roncon, and of course Pastrana. Yeah. It looks like every moto counts now. Pretty much, those four guys, but you know, I've raced a lot of championships, and a lot of things are going to happen, so I'm not really worried. I'm happy to get back some points after crashing that first moto. It's a tough loss. Those things kind of hurt a little bit, but just move on, and I'll, maybe I'll win the next one. For Steve Lampson, the veteran, he also makes the podium. Travis Pastrana with the sweep, of course, gets the big trophy. Stefan Roncotti in second. And Lammy still holds on to that points lead with a fine third-place finish in this second moto. Let's go back to Davey, who's with Lammy. Well, Steve Southwick is always one of the toughest race of the years for everyone. You came in with the points lead. Looks like you're going to go home with it, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of off all day. I just... Uh, I wasn't flowing very good. I was kind of struggling a little bit, but uh, I managed to put my head down and keep charging. And uh, you know, like I said, I can't. Like you said, you, I came out here with the, still with the points lead, and I think I gained a little bit of volume. So uh, that's the main thing right now. Mm -hmm. I was talking to town. It seems like between you and him, Stefan Roncada and Travis Pastrana, it's breaking down into a four-way fight. And it seems like every moto, every position, starting to count. Oh yeah, that's. I mean, I think about that a lot because it could come down to the last race, and you could lose by two points. And you know, if you gave up a little bit and you didn't get those two points, you'd be kicking yourself in the rear, you know. So, so I'm just happy to be out here. And uh, you know, my worst connection, uh, DGY, Detroit Lead Designs Honda, worked great today and uh, was pumped. Good job, Steve. Thank you. Steve holds on to that lead, but it's only by one point over Stefan Roncada. Nine points back as Bolin and Pastrana with his great double win here today moves from 27 points back up to 15. He's back in the race. Let's go to Davey. Man, Travis, I swear, everything you do, you make it exciting. What in the world is going on with your bike out there? Well, we were having a great battle, but um, I lost my rear brake. My goggles fogged up, so I didn't have a rear brake. I didn't have goggles, so it was kind of hard to get behind Talon, who was riding an awesome race. And every time I, it, it, I'm so lucky that it did it here at Southwick, where you can pretty much hold it in. But Talon was riding a great race, and wow, that was cool. <laughs> well, I want to be the first to congratulate you. You just won your first overall as a professional racer. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Davey. I'd like to thank everyone at Suzuki. No fear, acclaim. This is a dream come true, and to do it under you know the circumstances, I, I couldn't ask for anything better. Fantastic effort, and by the way, you're right back in the points chase. You picked up a handful today on Lamy and everyone. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. You know, I've got to take moto by moto, but here at Southwick, it's so cool because everyone's so close, and it's a very unique track. Right on. Thank you, Davey. It's just as tight a points race in the 250s as we see John Dowd. He's won here with the 250s. He's won here with the 125s. Can he come back in the second moto?
Meet Martin Delicious, Storm Chaser. Some head for the basement. He heads for a Chevy S10. It's got advantages over Ford Ranger, like better fuel economy, a bigger bed, and standard four-wheel anti-lock brakes on every model. Because if you want to outrun Mother Nature, you need every advantage you can get. Chevy S10, like a rock. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're gonna love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. You gotta eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with Bowflex. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. It's time now for the 250s to show off, and what a tight points race it is. Ricky Carmichael, who won the first three motos of the year, has struggled in the last four. Chad Watts is mechanic there, trying to get things ready. John Dowd, who always does well here on his home track, awaiting, hopefully, a good result. Can Villeman come back in this one? Tortelli has hit his stride. They're all gunning for this championship, and it's only the fourth round. The board is sideways. We're almost set to go for the final moto of the afternoon from Southwick, Massachusetts. Shane King on the KTM once again gets the whole shot. He'll pick off the bunnies. He looks back. And Robbie Raynard, bad luck in the first turn, along with Jay Palmer, number 452. So Raynard gets away in 39th position. Looked like he didn't bend anything on the bike, though. He was able to take off pretty aggressive, so long ways to come from behind, but it's a lot worse if you got bent handlebars. Ricky Carmichael with a good start. Damon Huffman with a good start. There's Shane King, number 110, on the four-stroke KTM. Two whole shots in a row for Shane. Getting good traction off that cement. And here's Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael wants the lead. And he takes it on the jump. Carmichael is so fast. When he decides he wants to make up time on somebody, I don't think there's anyone faster on the racetrack. He takes big chances to do it. Jumps right into that inside line right away. That's something they kind of scouted on that warm-up lap. Whoa, a little squirrely there. He lands short on that double. That's the third time I've counted. He's almost gone down this opening lap. Carmichael letting it all hang loose. If he had to tangle with LaRocco in that first moto and come out of it about 25th, but he gained about three seconds a lap in that first moto, David, for a respectable finish. Yeah, he is, like I said, he wants to win. And, and I get the feeling, too, that Carmichael is going to every race with a little something to prove. He wants to win so bad. He wants to just kill these guys. And everyone else, they talk about trying to be smart, let the series come to them. It's a long series. I don't know if that's going to get it done against Carmichael. He has to do it in spectacular fashion after those two 12th place finishes before at Mount Morris. Here is Mike LaRocco. Well, that's scary. When you go around that corner like that, if all you got to do is just hit one little bump wrong, have that back end swap around, and by the time you land off that plateau, you're totally sideways and crashing. So the two guys that got together in Moto 1 early in the Moto and had to fight from behind are now 1 and 2 with Shane King in third place and Damon Huffman number 20 in fourth. That's Wyndham in fifth, Albertine in sixth, and Villeman comes next. Villeman, pretty good start. Remember, he wasn't able to ride the last probably third of that first 250 moto, so he's going to be probably a little bit fresher physically, but also a little bit less in tune with what's happened to the racetrack. This is really the first time that Mike Morocco uh, has raced without pain since Glenn Helen a long time ago. That was the season opener. He just wasn't strong enough for Mount Morris, and he says his conditioning program is getting him back up toward par right now. So it's Carmichael, LaRocco, King, there's Huffman, there's Wyndham, Albertine, and Villeman. That could be quite a battle with Villeman back there. Well, he's going to push the issue on all those guys and force them to pick up the pace, or he's going to pass them all because he is... You can see how frustrated he was the first moto as he had to walk off the track to soak up that disappointment of not getting any points, and you know he's going to try to make up for it here. 
And Ricky Carmichael's out in front. The last eight years, we've had eight different winners. That'd make nine different in the 250s if Carmichael can hold on to this lead. Of course, the king of Southwick is Jeff Stanton. What a hard nose worker he was and he had four consecutive victories here from 1989 through 1992. It comes down to preparation for this type of racetrack and conditioning. And you know that guys like Bob Hanna who prided themselves on conditioning would do well this, at this uh, racetrack and if Ricky can win he'll also as he pointed out earlier add himself to that rare list of guys who've been able to win on a 125 and a 250. If Ricky wins, it'd be the 16th different winner in 22 years here at Southwick. Equal opportunity track. <laughs> well, I wish I could be a, a stat there, but I never could even get a moto in here. Ricky Carmichael pulls a lead with David Billiman on the charge at seven. Showtime is taking this summer by storm with On the Edge Entertainment you won't find anywhere else. In front is Ricky Carmichael. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs bringing you the action. But here's the freight train. And from second to sixth place, David, everybody's getting in the act here. What a great speed shot as they come back through there with a start. Pulls in. It's one of the fastest. It is the fastest section on the racetrack. These guys all trying to take a little bit different line to stay out of each other's roost. Billiman back there bringing up the rear. I don't think that's going to last much longer. He is just starting to get a little impatient. Look at the different line there. Switches to the inside. And Billiman, what a move that is, because Wyndham has to come to him on the short corner, and Billiman makes the pass. Greg Albertine in fifth, right in front of David. And it's Wyndham and Lusk. A little bit too early in the race to be looking for a smooth line. Billiman just went right down the center of the straightaway. Down the inside, hitting all the biggest breaking bumps, but it turned out to work in his favor. Now he's working on Albertine. See how deep that rut's getting. Looked like Wyndham right there dragging the foot pegs. You have to recognize on a track like this that changes lap to lap. If a line starts to get bad or deep or a burn gets pushed, you have to think about that and make your adjustment before the next lap. Villeman taking the lead on Albertine slightly and now beats him in the, into the corner. So Villeman is really on the move, trying to make up points that he lost with the DNF in the first moto. Villeman now looking at Huffman and King in front of him. There's Huffman on the left, and Huffman goes flying, takes a hard hit, and the flake's on top of him. That pipe is hot. He got a foot peg jammed into his side. Well, the track workers here have done a terrific job in protecting the riders during the crashes in the afternoon. Well, it looks like Damon's okay. It looks like he's just mad. This is the same section where we keep having problems. These guys get together. Remember Pastrana and Boland in the same place. Carmichael in the first moto, laying in the same place. Not under the bike quite like this. Damon's lucky right here. He got away from, he was able to walk away from that. Ricky Carmichael, I repeat, if you've tuned in late, is way out in front. And he's on his way for a victory here at Southwick. See Dow just working his way up into the mechanics area. He's got Tortelli behind him, so Tortelli he was so strong in that first moto, was buried behind all these guys. We talked about Billman being at the tail end of this freight train. Look at that, Lust, then King, and Tortelli's behind that. There's his mechanic, Shane Drew, checking his watch. He knows Sebastian has time to work his way to the front, but he's probably gonna have to ride even harder than he did the first moto to pass all these guys. What has to be realized right now, too, is you have a bad moto, you gotta get back, right back into it because anything can happen to any of the contenders. Tim Ferry's having a good day. He's in 10th place right now. And behind him is Robbie Raynard, which is incredible. Raynard was in 39th in the, on the first lap, and now he's already back to 11. He could be the fastest bike on the track right now. I'd safe to say he is. He was fast in the first moto, and I, I just can't believe he's doing this. And this is the kind of effort that I talk about I like to see from these guys these days I mean it's these guys are high paid the professionals and to see a, an effort like Raynard having his shoulder pop out in practice and go out and lead that first moto and come back from it'd be easy for him to say you know what it's just not my day my shoulders this or that but he's trying I like that endurance certainly plays a big role here in the second moto as well 
Well, the last five laps or so of this race, last 10 minutes rather, really we're going to see the guys that aren't in shape just dragging. There's no way to fake it out there. Uh-oh, Larry Ward. Looks like they're changing a tire on Larry's Kawasaki. Larry's best in recent years here at Southwick was a fourth in 1997. Kevin Windham tightening the screws a little bit on Albie. Lust tighten them on him. And what a great battle this has become. Tortelli's got quite a mission to get by two teammates. It wouldn't matter who these guys are. It's just look at the riders. He's got to work his way through. And Raynard into the picture once again. That's amazing as he tries to pull up with his Suzuki teammate, Greg Albertine. You know what I think happens here, and what looks like is happening right now, is that these guys are pacing themselves slightly. They know how rough the track is. It's the second moto. The sun is back out a little bit. It's humid. And they're not going as fast as they can go, like you see at some of the other races. And Raynard has gone into that panic mode. He went down in the first corner. He's not thinking about pace. He's thinking about get back up there. He's got a chance to win the overall. He can put together a good moto here. So he's riding all out, and that's the difference. Robbie taking a second in that first moto. Let's take a look at the Suzuki trivia question before we leave you. Which current 250 rider won the overall in a 125 here? The answer when we come back. I've heard people say that too much of anything is not good for you, baby. But I don't know about that. Welcome back. The answer to our Suzuki trivia question. Which current 250 rider won the overall at Southwick on a 125? It was Larry Ward back in 1992 on a Suzuki. Actually, his very first motocross victory was right here at this track back in 1989. Right now, he's trying to fix a flat tire so he can even finish this moto. Let's go to the pits now and check out Davey Combs is with Ron Wood. Ron, looks like quite a battle out there between Kevin, Sebastian, and Robbie Raynard who's come up from behind. Yeah, he's, it's, a, it's pretty close right now. Those guys are all real close. You can throw a blanket on every one of them, but there's still quite a bit of time left, so we'll have to see how it plays out. What was Kevin's expectations coming in here? Well, Kevin doesn't care for this track a whole lot, so he just wants to get through it with a good finish and then go on from there. Do you think he'd be satisfied where he's at now in fifth? I think so, but I expect him to get at least one more spot. Ron stepping in for Wyndham's regular mechanic, Ali Seymour, who was injured repairing bikes. We've had a lot of injuries in the mechanics uh, area this year. Yeah, that's a new one. Usually it's the riders, and they go out there and hit the turf, but these guys are getting hurt working on the bikes, which is kind of rare. It's... Look at Tortelli. He's doing everything he can to get through the pack. Greg Albertine in fourth place right now. Kevin's holding on pretty strong this time. I, I expected him to... Allow, uh, not necessarily on purpose, but I thought Tortelli would have gotten by him by now, and Kevin's been fighting hard here. Look at the fishtail of the bikes coming down that gnarly straightaway. And Tortelli gets that job done. He just, in order to do it, though, he was all out of shape. The bike was bouncing all over the racetrack, and he just had to hang on. The only way he could get around clean. You don't want to really stuff your teammate. He was able to make a clean pass back there. Windham number 14 drops back a notch, and Tortelli is on his way. That's twice Tortelli has reached up to clear his vision in a scary place at high speed. He must have really needed to be able to see. He's been saving that vision for when he was able to get around Kevin. And oh, look at that. Robbie Raynard just appeared out of nowhere, out of the bush. I don't think Kevin knew he was that close. Watch Tortelli right here. Look at the bike dancing all over the place. Gets by Kevin right there at the top before they head down that long, rough sweeper. These guys are starting to drift back to that inside line because it's the shortest line around the racetrack. Ooh. Oh, that was close. Tortelli almost having to duck underneath the, the handlebar there of a lapper, at least the shoulder of one. I can't believe he stayed up. And he needs to. Valuable points. He picked up the points lead after the first moto, and he's got Robbie Raynard. I mean, think about this. Tortelli didn't get a bad start. He was up in there. It wasn't a great start. It just goes to show that how much of this can be mental. If Robbie, chances are, if he'd have gotten a great start, he'd still be in the same position he is here. Watch how close this got with Tortelli. Watch right here. The handlebar is almost sticking into his helmet. 
He has to duck his uh, shoulder and elbow underneath. It actually looked like it ripped his throttle hand off. I don't know how either, either one of those guys stayed up, but they did. That lapper definitely knows now the leaders are coming around and get out of the way. Well, if you just tuned in, Robbie Raynard, number 17, was back in 39th position. And right now, you see him in our picture right behind Tortelli. And Tortelli now is hounding Albertine. It's the weirdest thing. I've gone out before. As a matter of fact, it's happened to me here where I've gotten a good start, finish up third, fourth, somewhere in there, and gotten a terrible start. And you still end up in the same place. Tortelli back there jumping into the berm to the outside. That's been his favorite line all day. He's made a couple of passes there, one on his teammate, Wyndham, one on Raynard in the first moto for the lead. Now he's got Raynard chasing him. He better figure out a way around out. He's sandwiched between the Suzuki team riders right now. I don't know if that's going to play any team tactics or not, but he's got to feel like he needs to get out of there quick. What a three-way battle for fourth. Ooh, they almost came into contact as Albie came from the outside. Albie pounds hard, and that gives the opportunity. Just the mistake that Tortelli was waiting for. Tortelli almost got caught up in it. He had to lock up the brakes to get around to the inside of Greg Albertine. And there goes Raynard. Raynard has answered every move and followed everything that Tortelli has done this whole race. Once he has gotten in contact with Sebastian, he has copied every pass. Well, Raynard ought to take this race and bottle it. Yeah, he has been a phenomenal. Watch Albertine right here. Now, why am I stopping this? Everything looks fine, right? No. See that tree? Watch him duck. He actually moved those branches around there, landed in the hole. He overjumped that a little bit, almost hits the left rider. Tortelli, good reactions to get on the brakes, get back to the inside and make the pass right there. But, boy, that could have been scary for Albertine. And Robbie Raynard is going right with him. We'll be right back. <laughs> He's upside down. This one has to. The Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Honda, the company that defines performance on two wheels. Performance first. And by Suzuki, makers of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. Ricky Carmichael, we haven't seen much of him. Neither of the other riders. He's way out in front, but look at this battle going on between Tortelli and Robbie Raynard. Raynard bar to bar with Tortelli now, who comes out of it in, in front. It is Robbie Raynard in an incredible search to move up the ladder. I don't believe what I'm seeing. I mean, we're looking at Tortelli, an awesome sand rider, guy in great shape, on great machinery, dominated the first moto, getting passed by a guy who crashed in the first corner. Now, I'm not saying that Tortelli's riding bad here. I'm saying that Raynard is riding exceptional. And here's the guy that we haven't seen much of on the final lap. He's been near perfect. Ricky Carmichael is looking for his second overall victory on the season. And after a 12-12 at Mount Morris, what a big boost in points this is for Ricky Carmichael. Well, right now, it definitely is. The first moto wasn't such a great boost. That fifth place didn't help. What did help was the fact that Billiman didn't finish. You know, and he, he lost valuable points to Tortelli, who won the first moto, but he's picking those back up right here. He's gaining some on Kevin Windham, so this is going to be a fight. Back and forth it goes. If all four of these guys stay healthy, we're going down to the last moto of the year. There's Mike Larocco, currently in second place. He's had a lonely ride there in second behind Ricky Carmichael, which is fine with him. He's had a good moto. And look how hard he's pushing. He's still riding as hard as he can. You can see in his body, he's aggressive. He's not that far behind Carmichael, but he's been, you can bet he's been riding as hard as he can. He had a good start. He still hasn't been able to make a dent in Ricky's lead. One thing that's nice to see in Morocco, he's getting his strength back after his injuries. Look at him jumping over those holes. Trying to keep that back in from swapping side to side down that hill is not easy. And our leader, Ricky Carmichael. He's got to be feeling great right about now. He came into this race saying, hey, I have to worry only about myself. I've got to make up for the bad 
performance at Mount Morris. I need to win, and win he does, taking the checkered flag here in the second photo. And winning the overall event at Southwick, Massachusetts. So he becomes the fourth rider to win both a 125 and 250 here. It's Carmichael, LaRocco, and Villamud, one, two, and three in our second photo. Let's go down to Davey. RC, way to rebound. That second moto charge just got you the overall here at Southway. I tell you what, uh, my team manager, Bruce, said uh, it's going to take a miracle to uh, to win the OA. And uh, I, uh, I got the, a good start, and uh, Shane King was out there on his uh, 800, whatever that thing is. And uh, I got by him and pulled away, and Mike was keeping me honest, so I had to work the whole moto. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Kawasaki Chevy trucks, Oakley Fox, uh, THQ and uh, I tell you what man uh, the last two weeks I trained my butt off for endurance and uh, after that poor finish at Sacramento and uh, you know I'm in this for the championship and uh, I think I showed everybody today that I'm gonna be tough. Well after a near disaster performance in the first moment those two big crashes to come back with a run like that you actually picked up points on everyone although Tortelli went 1-5. Yeah I picked up uh, <coughs> excuse me I didn't pick up points on Tortelli but uh, I'm looking to do that next weekend. Uh, it's going to be a dogfight, and uh, I'm here for the long haul, and I'm going to give it 110%. Good, tough ride, Ricky. Thanks a lot, Davey. Another phenomenal story here is coming from 39th in the second moto all the way to fourth has given Robbie Rayner to place on the podium in third behind Tortelli and Carmichael. Great job, Robbie. Let's go back down to Davey now. Mike, that first moto was a disaster for you with the crash on the first lap, the hole in the pipe. Way to come back strong in the second moto. A good, solid second-place ride. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, you know, I struggled uh, early in the season. I hurt my ankle at the first round, and and I've been struggling, like I said. And uh, I came uh, with a week off. I took the entire week off and got my ankle back where I could would come here and race. And, you know, unfortunately, I had some bad luck the first moto. But second moto, you know, my Honda got me a great start. And, my factory connections eventually were good, so I, you know, I couldn't catch Ricky, but I, I kept him inside. It sounds like you ate a little bit of dust there. You having trouble with your throat? I ate a ton of sand today. <laughs> well, good ride in the second moto. Thanks a lot. And so here's what it looked like going into today's action. David Villeman leading by three points over Kevin Windham. Well, Villeman went from first to fourth in the point standings after today's action. Tortelli by four. Carmichael is six points back. David Villeman now 13 points in back of the leader. Every week, a new experience on the Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series Tour. In the 125s, a sweep for Travis Pastrana in his very first Nationals victory. I'll tell you what, this kid came into the sport with a lot of hype, and he's backing it up now by winning in the mud. He's winning in the sand. He's winning without a rear brake, without goggles, and a sore throttle hand. The kid is amazing. In the 250s, it was just what the doctor ordered for Ricky Carmichael. He has won four of the eight motos so far this year, David. He has got so much confidence right now. And to overcome the 12-12 performance he had at Mount Morris, he's got to come back and win motos, and he's got the confidence to do it. Art Ekman for David Bailey and Davey Coombs, thanking you for being with us.